Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my next epic oceanic adventure as I embark on a daring voyage across the open seas, scavenging debris from the ocean and reefs. I will transform the humble 2x2 platform I start on into the best yacht I could conjure up. All the while, I will be unraveling the mysteries of this forsaken world, contending with man-eating sharks and racing against time. Will I be able to accomplish this feat in 100 days? Join me on this thrilling journey as I navigate the challenge challenges of the deep and strive to conquer the unknown. I mysteriously started out on a couple of floating wooden planks and with a hook that I accidentally let go of. Not knowing what to do about that, I jumped into the ocean to retrieve the hook. However, I was quickly introduced to one of those man-eating sharks. Never mind. I had no choice but to retreat back to the safety of my floating planks. Although the shark did manage to nip at me, I somehow survived the attack. I then focused on collecting some debris floating by, which allowed me the ability to craft a plastic hook. The afternoon proceeded with me collecting as many resources as the ocean could provide, and I crafted a wooden spear to protect my little floating platform from the great white assassin. I crafted a bolting hammer and tried my hand at extending my raft. Of course, I didn't get too far with that as materials needed for this specific task was scarce. So, I turned my attention to an island quickly approaching in the distance, and I had an unwanted visitor chomping on my raft. Quite unfortunate for the poor fellow, as I was well prepared for this event. A few jabs to the eyeballs deterred the shark from completely devouring my flaws, and a few taps with my hammer repaired the broken pieces and added in the missing few. With all that happening, the raft moved closer to the island. However, I had no way to get to land or so I thought. That's when I had a light bulb moment. What about crafting a paddle of some sort? The thing is, I needed a few pieces of plastic for the paddle. Fortunately, I was able to grab the plastic that I needed and made my way to the island. Stay here, Raft. Can we get anything from here then? We can get food at least. Pineapples! Let's get out of here. Hey, yo! Wait! Hold up! The beginning of day two brought forth a series of unfortunate events. Suffering from dehydration and on the verge of starvation, I quickly improvised a simple purifier. Scooping up water from the sea, I held my breath anxiously waiting for the purifier to complete its process and provide me with drinkable water. Oh, by the way, I managed to grab one of those blueprints essential for unraveling the mysteries of this world. Determined to address my hunger, I set out to construct a basic grill. Gathering a few planks, scrap and rope, I crafted the much needed item. For food, I had a couple of veggies to cook. Nothing spectacular, but I think it would do the job. However, the Great White Shark had other plans, wreaking havoc on my raft and destroying one of its floors. Swiftly, I repaired the damage, utilizing the materials at hand and continued collecting debris. As the day progressed, I approached another island. I decided to expand my raft using the resources I had gathered, hoping to safeguard my food stations from the relentless shark attacks. Let's see if we can grab more fruits and stuff. Please tell me you got some fruits here. Yeah? Ain't no flower. Ooh. Ooh. Well, that was just perfect. Fruits or food or anything that's gonna help us here? Oh, oh there we go. I think this got watermelons. Yes. Can we cook them? Also, I secured the second crucial blueprint for starting the story missions and crafted a stone axe. With this tool, I could now chop down trees, obtaining planks, leaves, and fruit. After the usual shark attack, I proceeded to extend my raft a bit. Following that episode, I crafted a sail and streamer to help me navigate across the seas more efficiently, not forgetting the need for some storage, as my inventory was a bit of a mess. While traversing the vast sea, my attention was captured by another raft that appeared in the distance. I just couldn't resist taking a closer look. Freaking boxes at the top of this raft. How do we get this? Rotate it. Wait, 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 wait. Nope. I don't want to lose my raft, man. I can't get to the top. Okay. Never mind. <laughs> we tried. I just sunk your raft, dude. I'm sorry. 
Sayonara! Day 4 brought a sense of accomplishment as a storm brewed nearby. I managed to take down the mighty great white shark and seized a bunch of highly nutritious shark meat. Now that, my friends, made for the best barbecue I've had in quite a while. With that achievement in hand, I continued to expand my raft with a couple of plank foundations and set up a research table to unlock some recipes essential for my journey. One particular useful one was the blueprint for the simple collection net. I went ahead and placed four of these nets, safeguarding them with a protective wall of foundations. On the other hand, my eagerness to explore a massive island that was nearby was dampened by the presence of a giant bird circling overhead. Lacking any means to defend myself against this dangerous foe, I reluctantly scrapped the idea and sailed past the island. It was an early start to day 5 as I had to deal with the pesky shark once again. Fortunately, luck was on my side as I came across yet another raft filled with goodies. This time, I managed to get close enough with my raft to access the storage box it contained. I proceeded to place a few more collection nets on my raft, using foundations to shield against the shark's attacks. While attempting to reach one of the nearby islands, I thought it best to collect as many resources as the ocean could provide. At the same time, I decided to try my hand at farming, crafting a small crop plot and planted a few potatoes to see how things would turn out. By this time, I was nearing the island that I had spotted. Get up into this world! Awesome! Let's get collecting, shall we? Mangoes, mango seeds. Oh, there's the mangoes. Watermelons would be amazing. We can get some watermelons here. No watermelons. No watermelons for cams. Oh, there's a watermelon. Okay, we're good here, man. Just need to get out of here. As I approached the next island, I decided it would be a good idea to check out the reef and possibly harvest some of the resources there to unlock more recipes. To achieve that, I needed to distract the shark. And I had a pretty good idea of how to do just that. However, I had to try my hand at fishing. Yeah, a pomfret and a herring were needed to craft shark bait. Once I had acquired the shark bait, I anchored my raft and set out the bait to attract the shark. Thing is, being quite an inexperienced rafter, I had a bit of a difficult time harvesting some of the resources. For example, I had no idea how to farm seaweed. Nonetheless, the other resources were relatively easy to gather. So, I opted to grab as much as I could before the shark was done with the bait. <laughs> I finally figured out what I needed to do to farm seaweed. With that knowledge, I managed to harvest a decent haul. I also needed to harvest some sand and clay. Now these were a bit difficult to spot as they looked somewhat similar to the untrained eye. However, I did manage to farm the materials that I required. With these newly acquired materials, I proceeded to prepare for the crafting station that I wanted to obtain. To unlock the smelter, I had to craft wet bricks and lay them out to dry before they could turn into dry bricks. Later that evening, I managed to take down another shark, securing some juicy shark meat for a future barbecue. With the ocean temporarily shark free, I seized the opportunity to explore the reef, unearthing its hidden gems one by one. Alrighty, on day 8, my bricks were finally dry, and it was time to research them to unlock the smelter. The thing is, though, I didn't quite have the necessary items to craft said smelter. Yeah, great stuff. So, my friends, I was off yet again in search of another island where I could find the resource resources that I needed. Later that day, I spotted a random floating raft and I just had to give it a little look-see. Quickly get to the top of this. Come on. Let me get to the top. Hey, Oh! Bro! Recipe for... Coconut beets? Considering I was a long way away from the previous island and with no land in sight, I opted to work on my raft, adding a few more of those collection nets and extending the size of my raft. At the same time, I tried to lay out the foundations to map out the yacht that I eventually wanted to build. After traveling for hours across the deep blue ocean, I finally saw a glimpse of land. I swiftly set my sail towards the island in the distance and hoped that the wind and tide would help me to get to it. That evening, I managed to reach the island and proceeded to explore its unknown terrain, gathering valuable resources along the way. Bright and early on day 10, I set out the shark bait and quickly made my way around the reef, where I sought out sand and clay. To my surprise, there were plenty of these resources lying around this reef, and I was also able to grab some seaweed as well. From there, I went straight back to the raft to craft the remainder of the bricks required for the smelter, and placed them on the raft and waited for them to dry. While waiting for the bricks to dry, I thought it would be a good idea to go 
down to the reef to gather the other resources I had left behind. To do that, I had to take care of the shark. And folks, I had a cunning plan to do just that. While the shark was busy with the shark bait, I executed a surprise attack to take it out. Doing this a few times helped me get rid of the great white. With the shark out of the way, I was awarded a few minutes of uninterrupted farming, gathering all of the material that I could find and carry with me to the raft. It was simply beautiful. And so the farming spree continued into the next day. As the shark bait was still effective, I went ahead to take down the great white shark once more. With the shark out of the way, I used this time to scavenge for any leftover resources that I might have overlooked. Back at the raft, I tried to craft the smelter. Thing is though, I was pretty low on planks and the only way I could get them was to leave the island and pick up the scraps that the ocean had to offer. So yeah, it was a no-brainer. I had to leave. On day 12, I struggled against the current to reach a nearby island. I tried my utmost best to paddle to the shores, but for some reason I just couldn't get there. It seemed like the current was way too strong for poor old camps. With the greatest regret, I chose to give in to the power of the mighty deep blue sea and laid down my paddle. Then I turned my attention to fixing up the raft with a couple of upgrades, like the smelter for one. I found a good spot to place it down and got it to work as soon as possible. However, it only smelted one item at a time, which proved to be quite tedious. I also researched a piece of goo that I happened to find along the way, unlocking a couple of cool recipes that I could use. To end things off, I proceeded to grab scraps from the ocean and equipped my raft with a few of those collection nets. Ah yes, I was once again in luck as I came across another random raft with some loot. I started off the day by researching the metal ingots that I was able to cook up, unlocking an array of metal items like the metal bolts, hinges, shears and so much more. What I really couldn't wait to get my hands on was the basic bow. This, my friends, was going to be a game changer and the way I was going to defend myself. But of course, I had to have a little practice run with it. Then, it was after exploring the island and most importantly, getting to the intriguing item that I had spotted at the top of the hill. But first, let's take down all of these trees that we need. Planks, coconuts and leaves. Oh, pineapples or watermelons. Guys could have at least given us this, making us come up so higher. Oh, there's watermelons. Thought as much. Oh, brilliant. And pineapples as well. So, my friends, what do we have here? Oh, son. That's all we got from this island. Day 14. I had finally gathered the resources for a stationary anchor. I was relieved about this item, considering I wouldn't have to keep crafting the other buckets thingy. However, the anchor was kind of huge, and I would need to extend my raft to add it in. Anyways, I had a few other things in mind. Adding a couple of collection nets to the raft, for one. Secondly, crafting some metal tools and weapons to complement my gear, and taking out the new island that I had stopped at. Did I mention that I practiced more with the bow? Eventually taking out the mighty great white with a few accurate shots to the most vulnerable spots. I guess this was the best time to grab a couple of those much needed materials from the reef. Wouldn't want to waste this free time, eh? On day 15, I focused on working on my raft. As I zeroed in on another island in the distance, I went ahead to cook up a bunch of collection nets to fill in the gaps and place down some of those fancy smancy wooden floors to extend my raft. Yeah. I thought they looked really great and had a bit more durability to them. The reason behind the extension was to actually place down the stationary anchor that I had. Unfortunately, I couldn't get a good placement because I really wanted to center the darn thing. And that kind of bugged me a bit. So, I decided to hang on to it for a while until I could figure out what to do with it. On a side note, now looking back at my raft design, I could see where I went wrong. For those wanting to know, yes, I did stop at the island and gathered the, um, stuff that I required. So, this was your typical day on raft, floating across the open ocean, hoping to spot an island, only to strip it down of its resources to stock up on the items required. Well, at least I was able to get some fruits and a few other bits and bobs from that experience. Back at my raft, I went about researching the copper ingot that I cooked up, unlocking some useful gadgets, the circuit board and a battery. I then picked up the bricks I had laid out to dry 
crafting another smelter in the effort to speed up my refining process. While defending my raft against the attack from the darn freaking shark, I managed to do some serious damage to it, causing it to actually pass out. Knowing myself, I just couldn't pass up the opportunity to check out the reef and extract its hidden gems. Yeah, all of its hidden gems. Alrighty peeps, on day 17, I finally found the courage to check out one of those huge islands. And yeah, this one had one of those giant birdies flying around and a couple of surprises waiting for me. Not entirely sure what happened to the giant bird, but after our first encounter, it sort of got glitched into a crazy loop or something and, well, just started doing a whole lot of weird things. I mean, it was great not having to worry about it attacking me, but there was something else on the island. A pumba, and it looks mean as ever, folks. Unfortunately, I got too close to it, and well, the warthog started charging me down. So, I had to run for dear life straight into the ocean. Luckily, this warthog couldn't swim, and I was pretty much safe from its attacks. Using that knowledge to my advantage, I chilled in the water and sprayed the warthog with arrows from my bow, ultimately destroying the stinky foe. Oh yeah, I also found a trading post tucked away in the corner. However, it was of no use to me at that point in time. I really had nothing to offer. Although, there was a cool little crate hidden from sight that I just happened to find. Man, was that a juicy box full of goodies? Then, there was also that really interesting area at the top of this island that I wanted to check out. Alrighty, let's go see what's up there. I cannot resist the temptation to find out what kind of loot is stored for us. Let's see to take care of this thing. Try and get a better shot, maybe. Can we go up here? Seems like we can't. Well, that's great. How are we supposed to go up there? Oh, there's a cave? No freaking way. Yo. Wait, can we collect this? Oh, this is dirt. So how do we get up here? We have to go here. Try and get this thing. Ah, oh, frick cams. There we go. It's going to be coming. Ah, oh, freak coming after me. This is going to be quite a difficult process to go up there. I'll try and see if I can find a way. There we go. I'd love to take down this bird, but uh, my aiming skills aren't on point here. So uh, let's get out of here whilst we still can. See you, little birdie. Thank you for letting me visit. Well, I decided to camp overnight at this spot. As I've mentioned, there were a bounty of trees that I could harvest for their planks. I also went ahead and got myself a shiny new storage box that could handle a whole lot more items. Once that was out of the way, I got my gear ready and I was off to harvest some planks. Thing is though, I discovered something unexpected in the process. No way. No freaking way, dude. There's trees that I cannot harvest. They're like right here. No freaking way. What's wrong with these people? <laughs> oh, you gotta be kidding me. Okay. Uh, well, we can harvest the other things. <laughs> yeah, so I couldn't really harvest all of the trees here, but I managed to get some of them. It was better than nothing, I suppose. For the next two days, I tried my best to resist the urge of hopping islands and focused on working on my raft. I had a whole lot of things to do to turn this heap of junk into the best version of a yacht that I could build. Therefore, I continued working on getting the foundation phase right before moving up a level. This was crucial because with most of my builds that I do, I was going in blind and furthermore, I had no experience building with this type of thing. Anyways, I finally set up my stationary anchor and proceeded to try to shape my raft into a yacht. Well, as far as my resources would take me. After replenishing my supply of planks, I continued filling in the missing pieces to my yacht build. And with that, I'd say things were actually starting to look really awesome. On day 21, I came across another one of those huge islands, and the urge to uncover its secrets was too strong to resist. Pulling up next to it, I was wary, knowing there were probably creatures waiting for a showdown. Armed with my bow, I cautiously surveyed the land. Within seconds, out popped Pumba, charging me down as if I owed him a life supply of bugs. There was no reasoning with this fella, and unfortunately, I had to take him down. With Pumba safely tucked away in my storage box, I proceeded to scout the island for real trees to farm. Despite the size of the island and the abundance of trees, getting planks proved to be rather challenging. However, in my search for these elusive real trees, I spotted something in the distance that I hadn't seen before. Oh, wait, wait, wait. This is where the knit gun comes in. Hey, buddy. I don't know whether you're gonna attack me or, or what. 
Come on. Oh, I gotcha. Come on. I need some feathers. How about a spear? Oh, you are just too fast for me. Come here, you. I need some feathers. Oh, there we go. Stop running. This is a lost cause. Oh, uh, okay. You know what? Get out of here. <laughs> it's not gonna work, bro. After that shameful defeat, I turned to farming the available trees, grabbing the planks needed for my yacht build. It's been a fruitful day. And our yacht is coming along together. Couple things to do. <laughs> a whole lot of things to do. But uh, it's been great. A great day. Right. We're gonna hit on out of here. Over the next several days, I decided to stay aboard my raft, focusing on collecting as many scraps from the ocean as possible. I worked diligently on completing the bottom deck of my yacht build, incorporating a few large crop plots to grow the palm seeds I had gathered over time. Gradually, I extended my raft to what I believed was the perfect size. To keep those annoying birds from snacking on my crops, I cleverly placed down a scarecrow. This smart move not only did the trick, but also let me snag one of those birds, getting me some feathers as well. Of course, I had to research them, unlocking a bunch of cool new items. Feeling the need for raft improvements, I rearranged my anchor, relocating it to the back of the yacht, farthest from everything else. By day 24, I began working on the story missions. To kick things off, I had to craft a few special gadgets, starting with a receiver requiring a few bits and bobs. Additionally, I needed to craft three antennas to receive the signals. To make this setup work, I had to build a second floor, but resources on the raft were hard to come by. Anyways, I had to start somewhere, so I prepared a spot to build and gathered as much materials as the ocean brought forth. Staying up all night gathering planks from the sea, I managed to rack up a huge haul by the morning of day 25. I then went ahead to place the supports for the floor above and finished it off with simple wooden flooring. Later that night, I proceeded to set up the receiver system. Turn on. Brilliant! Gotta figure out how I need to, uh, where I need to go. Well, it seems like I'm going the right direction. Oh, so close. Our first story location. Brilliant! Almost there. Where are we going? This way, camps. Come on. There we go. Alrighty, let's go and check this place out. Loads of things we need to get through here. Brew B1. Nothing. Can we chop down these things? Nope. There's a note. January. It's been weeks. Sparrow took the boat. Yeah. I, I can't figure out why. I don't know, mate. But I'm pressing on here. Loads to see. Robbie, boat's gone. Bruce is after me. Gonna stay here until I find a way off this place. Quarter shark named him Bruce. I'm guessing we need to go up, up, and up. Ooh, huge crate. Got our spear and a blueprint. Headlights. What the? Trace, pick up a note. Ah, oh, nice, we made it. We freaking made it, peeps. You get there to D1. Let's go. Here. We made it again, peeps. Good to go. Another note. Oh, oh. Let's go! Nice! We got it! Yes! We got it, we got it, got it. It's Utopia! Is there a Utopia? Is there? Can I research Recycler? Ooh. Oh! Pick up a note! More notes! And uh, this little one here. Hey, Tala! What's up? Hey! A friendly face! Wondering how I ended up here? Long story. Really, really long story. Yes, I see anyway. that. So, uh, yeah, I think we're going to be spending the night here. Because I still need to go and check out Down Under. I want to do that. It's dark and there's a shark in the water. After dealing with a shark, I changed my plans to scope out the base of the radio tower. I stashed most of my belongings in storage and shut off to explore the submerged section of the building. To say the least, there wasn't anything of interest there, just the usual scrap pieces and other resources. However, I did come across another note, more scrap metal, and got lucky finding a loot box that provided a whole lot of useful items. On day 27, it was time to bid farewell to the radio tower as I entered the core for the next story location and set sail towards the beacon. I spent the rest of the day chilling on the rafts and picked up all of the scraps that I could find. Oh yes! For days 28 and 29, I spent my time working on the raft. For some reason, the front of the yacht build wasn't lining up. I don't know how this happened, but it looked really off and I just had to do something about it. I did attempt to do so, but somehow it didn't turn out the way I wanted it to. I could have fooled myself into believing it was okay, even continuing to build upon it by adding 
getting a few of those premium looking walls, but at the back of my mind, I knew I was going to regret it. That's why on day 29, I went about doing a major overhaul to the yacht design. I took apart the work that I had did previously, added a new row to the build, hoping that this would fix the problem I was experiencing. And for the love of planks, I had to tear down the walls I had just placed. It killed me inside, but I just had to do it. Well, at least I did fix the problem, eventually. On day 30, I continued working on the raft as I made my way to the next story location. What I really wanted to do was check out some of the advanced cooking stations that I had researched and unlocked. I also needed a few more pieces of glass, so I took a gamble by using the sand I had collected and dumped it into the smelter. I mean, it made sense, right? Luckily, that worked. I crafted a cooking pot which I had mistaken for the grill, but hey, it was going to come in handy soon. I also crafted the advanced purifier. Now that was a next level purification contraption. It took quite a few cups of water and with that I knew my water problems were a thing of the past. Later that day I reached another nearby island, took out the shark with my bait trick and dove down under to farm up a few bits and bobs that I could find. It turns out that I had problems using the receiver to navigate to the next mission area. I got lost and ended up missing it by miles. The only thing I could do was readjust my course and hope for the best. Anyways, it was back to the more important task for the day. Like crafting that grill I had mixed up with the cooker. The griller could cook multiple meats at once. And as a survivor on a raft, it was a godsend. I also tried cooking up some vegetable soup, thinking it would pair well with the barbecue shark meat. I didn't forget to fix up the walls that I had taken down previously and of course dealing with that darn irritating shock again. The next couple of days I decided to prepare for my next mission. Instead of wasting time I hopped to the islands I could find, took down Bruce the shark using the shark bait technique and swam down to the reef to gather all of the important resources I could find. Back at the raft I laid down some wet bricks for them to dry out as I worked on setting up a third smelter to speed up my refining process. I also checked on the smelters that I had running making sure they were topped up and filled with the fuel they required. With the planks I had collected over time, I slowly continued making progress on my yacht build, placing a few more walls and adding in more wooden floors. With all that was going on, I had come across another huge island and decided to check it out. I also wanted to test out the net launcher. On a side note, I had no idea how this thing worked, and I soon found out that I would be needing ammo for it. Just great! How the freak do I get that? Well, there was a plus side to this. I was able to receive search the headlights, something that would come in handy pretty soon. And I also got myself a shovel to gather dirt for something important, I guess. Then it was off to scour the island, battling against the local wildlife, putting my hands to work as I dug up some dirt and farmed a few of the trees for more wooden planks. On day 35, I prepared for my next mission. Organizing my belongings became a top priority. First on my to-do list was the headlight. I decided to acquire two, just in case. Moving forward, I crafted a second water bottle to ensure I had enough water to sustain me during the upcoming challenges. While doing so, a raft just happened to appear out of nowhere. And of course, I had to check it out. Continuing my checklist, I needed a few metal spears, coupled with some stone arrows for ranged attacks. Lastly, I couldn't forget about making some grub to go. On the menu, I had some veggie soup. Well, folks, it seems like I was still having some issues trying to get to the mission area. For some reason, I was sailing off course and couldn't freaking find my way, which was really sad. Anyway, I had a few things to tackle on my raft while I tried to figure things out. I placed down some wooden supporting pillars to extend my second floor with a simple wooden flooring. After that, I hopped off to a nearby island to gather the planks needed for my raft. At the same time, taking a glance, set the work already done. And man, did it look awesome! Day 37, I made progress with both reaching the next coordinates and my yacht build. I rearranged my collection nets and added a few more into the mix. I completed the front of my yacht build by erecting some of those fancy wooden walls and finally added a stairway to reach the second floor. Well peeps, I finally reached Vasagatan and it was time to take on my next challenge. Oh boy, there was a whole lot of things to do here. We got this cams. We got this. Ready the spear. Time to rock and roll. Do we need it? Uh, how do we even put this? Oh wait, wait, here. There we go. I figured that out. What is this? What does it do? Use the crowbar. There we go. 
Mm. Yay! Yeah. Bro! Woo! Whew. Come on! Yup! We got ya! So he needs like three, three shots of the spear and it's gone. Bothrop! Oh, whoa, whoa, what is this? We got a red key. Awesome. I'm assuming we'll need this uh, gas tank for something. Pick up note. We're good. Oh, oh pick up mechanical parts. We need that. That's for sure. Bolt cutters. Got another note. Okay, five mechanical parts. Okay, and it requires two electrical wire, lighter, gas tank, one bullet. Okay, yeah, we're all good. All right, all right, all right. Let's backtrack. Do we leave any mechanical parts here? You all clear? Let's go. Awesome. Got another note and a blue key. Blue key. Awesome. Let's get out of here. Oh, son. There's the exit. Where are these freaking rats, man? Nothing here. Oof, I hear them. <gasps> bullets. I found them bullets. Hey, yo. That's one of those damn rats. Get out! Hey yo! Your job. Where are ya? Ooh. Come on! One more! Oh. There we go! Jeez! You give me the shivers! Four digit code. I don't have a four digit code. Got a mechanical part. How many do we have so far now? We got five mechanical parts. Brilliant. That's all we need. Oh, there's a four digit code. Bro. There we go. There's the four digits. What we get for ya. Ooh. Alrighty, so there's still a couple of things that we need to do. But of course we need to get upstairs. Um Look, I, I took it out there. Frick, these things keep popping up from everywhere. Mechanical parts and the bomb. I have to go all the way back. Great stuff, eh? There we go. Use the bomb. Yikes! There we go. That's what we needed. We got the cords for the next place, I believe. Oh, there we go. 6140. Blueprint for the engine. Blueprint for the steering wheel. And mates, we're done here. Oh, son. Considering this super yacht had a ton of loot, I decided to stay a little longer to stock up on all the juicy loot I could find, as well as checking out the secret room behind the safe. After collecting all the loot I can from Vasagatan, it was time to say my goodbyes and move towards my next mission. Well, I also happened to find some new blueprints along the way that would certainly help me get around a little faster. I really wanted to get these raft improvements as soon as possible. With the materials I had on my raft, I crafted one of the engines I required and created a steering wheel to help navigate the raft more efficiently. However, I was debating where I wanted to place the steering wheel and ended up not fixing it to the raft. Yeah, it was one of those things, I guess. The next day, I headed off towards one of those huge islands, and of course, I couldn't pass up the opportunity to check what it had to offer. So, I hopped on land to explore its mysteries and came across another wild warthog. Let's just say it didn't stand a chance against the camster. As for that darn giant bird in the sky, now that was a different story. I just couldn't figure out how I was going to take it down, and this thing kept nailing me with those freaking boulders on my head. So much so that I almost got wrecked by it. Fortunately, I made a break for it and reached my raft just in time, where I stayed behind to catch my breath. After taking a moment to regroup, I returned to the island to gather as many trees as possible for the planks I needed to work on my raft. I had camped overnight on this island because I wanted to grab a few items from the reef. I set out the shark bait, waited for it to attract the shark, and jumped him while the shark was busy with the bait. Once I took out the shark, I grabbed my gear and shut down to the reef. I was actually in search of a puffer fish or something like that because that's what was needed to get explosive powder for my net gun. The thing is, I had no idea what the puffer fish looked like and kinda missed my opportunity to get one. Yeah, I swam too close to one, I think, and it exploded in my face. Anyways, with that over, I went on collecting the other important resources that I could find. For the next few days, I focused on my raft build as I thought it 
needed a bit of rearranging. I took out the sail and streamer, added some support beams to include more flooring space on the second level, and then repositioned the sail and streamer to the second level. From there, I continued adding more support and flooring to the build. I went ahead and did a complete overall of my collection system as well. I crafted a whole bunch of collection nets, placing them all around my raft, and repositioning some of the items that stood in the way to achieve a good flow. On day 46, I punched in the next coordinates that I had to check out. I also finally gathered enough resources to craft a second engine for my raft, then went ahead to placing both engines and the steering wheel to test them out. Yeah, I must say, it was a whole lot better than just using the sail. A few planks were needed for the engines to work, of course, but that is why I still kept the sail. Speaking of planks, I had managed to accumulate quite a haul of them, so I decided to put those planks to use as I proceeded to complete the flooring on the second level of my raft. While on my journey to the next mission area, I stopped at a nearby island to stock up on some of the valuable items that I needed. This time, I didn't have enough fish to craft shark bait, so I whipped out my fishing rod and cast it into the ocean. For those who know how to fish, you'd know that this takes a whole lot of patience and in this instance, a whole lot of tries. After a few attempts, I was able to get the fish needed to craft shark bait, and I set that out as fast as I could to take out that darn shark. Then, it was off to the depths of the sea to farm up the metal laws that I wanted and a few other bits and bobs. On day 48, I was closing in on the next chapter that I had to uncover. With that drawing closer, I decided to start prepping a few items to ready myself to tackle what lay ahead. I gathered the food, water and gear that I needed to take with me. I also crafted some stone arrows for ranged attacks as I was going to face some really tough opponents and having attacking options would surely help. I then cooked up a few metal spears as those were among the best weapons in my arsenal. Then, I steered my raft around this colossal island as I looked for the entrance to this mysterious place. Alrighty, it was time to tackle Balboa Island. To do that, I needed to find a few relay stations and take out a few bears. Relay station, ranger station, so we need to go, let's go number two first. Jeez, I thought there was a freaking bear with the footsteps. <laughs> Wait. Is that mama bear or just the bear? I do not want to tackle any of them bears. <laughs> oh. 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 Have that for lunch with ya. And that. Okay, you got me there, son. And that. Come on. One more. Whoopa. What the freak? Hey, yo. What the freak, bro? Are you just charging me like that? Son. You need to calm down, man. Okay, relay station two is up there. Whoopa. We made it. Awesome. Okay, we made it to the first relay station. So we don't need any of these plastics. We've got tons of that. Plastics ain't that good. But we need to switch that on. And get the other two. Alrighty, let's check out this uh, ranger station. What we're interested in. We need this and a note. Now, my friends. Ooh, there's food here. I think that's all we need. And uh, get out of here. Let's go to station. Oh, frick. It's nighttime already. Darn it. Ah, oh, there we go. I found it. Hey, yo, wait. This is number four. Let's try and uh, hit it with this. This, do we hit the le lever or we hit that? Well, either way, we got it. I don't know if you want to mess with number six because that's, that's where we need to get Mama Bear's stuff. Or we'll pass that stuff. I may just camp here for the night, maybe. We shall see. Anything good you have for us? There we go. Blueprints. What you got for us here? Nothing. Should I? Should I not camp here? That is the question. Alright, so we have a map. We're like right here. We need to get to six. I'm a bit scared. But we're gonna go ahead and try it. Oh, peeps, guess what I found? I got some honeycombs right here that I can grab. I'm not sure what it what to do with it, but uh, it is 
a new resource. For the final relay station, I had to figure out how to distract the monstrous mama bear. Oh boy, this was quite scary. Oh mama bear, please, 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 please don't eat me. Wait, 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 wait. We need to put the berries here. Oh, mama bear. We need to go to the cave. Quick, quick, thumbs. Grab the stuff and get out of here. This is all that we need. Oh, come on. Oh, frick. Okay, okay, whatever. I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. Hey, yo, wait. Do I still... Oh, no, that broke. Oh, we got a note, that is. Here we go. The last piece of the puzzle. No, not that. Ah, there we go. So, my friends. Hey, buddy. You just chilling there. What's up, mate? So, it's two, three, four, zero. That's looking good. I think we're all done here. Let's check to this, uh... This mate got for us. Buddy! Uh, yeah, could you be an angel and help me out a bit? Uh, I know you big time. All right, Johnny. Come aboard. We got room for you. Let's make our way back to the raft and... Get our butts out of here! After the experiences of Balboa Island, it was time to leave this beautiful land and move towards my next mission. With all the new materials I had found on the island, I turned to my research table to uncover the items that these resources could unlock. I managed to acquire quite a few, including the blueprint to craft my very own machete, the biofuel refiner, the oxygen bottle, and so much more. Having done what I needed to do, I set course for the green dot coordinates on the receiver, a signal emitted by those huge islands. Oh yeah, Mr. Blister here decided to have a go on my raft again. Pretty unlucky for him this time. I had him checked and sent him on a one-way ticket to Sushiville. So, I reached the island that I had set my course to. Without wasting any time, I set out the shark bait to lure the shark closer to me. While it was distracted, I took it out with my awesome spear jabbing skills. Then, it was off to the bottom of the reef to collect those juicy mech nuggets. Honestly, I was hoping to spot a puffer fish, but unfortunately, none were around. Oh well, at least I was able to grab more of those mech nuggets to go. Anyways, I ventured onto land to see what it had to offer. I knew these bigger islands often held special treasures, worth visiting for. It just so happened that there were some bees flying around. The perfect opportunity to grab some with my net. Although, somehow these bees turned into jars. I really didn't know how that worked out. On the plus side, I was able to grab a bunch of honeycombs and I also managed to scoop up a few shovels of dirt. For days 53 to 55, I continued the search for the elusive puffer fish, hopping from island to island in the hopes of catching a glimpse of that tricky fish. I really wanted to get that explosive powder to start catching some animals but there was none to be found. Although, I couldn't let those days go to waste. After all, the shark was taken out every single time. It was the perfect opportunity to grab those all-important resources. Yeah, from each of those islands that I had stopped at. Having no luck finding pufferfish, I set course for my next mission area, Caravan Town, coordinates 2340. While doing so, I had the unfortunate event of being attacked by another shark. Thing is, I couldn't really figure out where the shark was attacking from, and by the time I found out, the darn thing not only destroyed the flooring, but also took out one of my engines. Like, what the freak? Having that happened once, I took no chance and moved swiftly to secure my other engine by surrounding it with a wall of wooden foundations. Luckily, I had enough material to craft another engine for my raft and replace the one that I had just lost, also fortifying it with a wall of wooden foundations. To end the day, I decided to do a little fishing to stock up on the fish for the shark bait and as a process that would help me calm down from the series of events that had taken me by surprise. It was rather cool, though. Just me, the ocean, and that darn freaking shark. Alrighty, on day 57, I was closing in on the next mission area, Caravan Town. As I approached the island, a screecher, alerted by my presence, unleashed a barrage of boulders, managing to nail me on the head again. I had to contend with this giant bird while trying to dock my raft. I need to take care of this thing first. Run, you piece of crap, you. <laughs> I think it's gonna come back. Where is it? Oh, there it is. I see ya. Yeah! Where'd he go? Where'd he go? Where'd he go? Oh, there it is. It's coming! Why isn't it dead yet? We got a rough proper stuck here. <laughs> the only way I can, uh... Oh, shiza. I knew that was coming. I need to get rid of this darn bird. 
pull up. Poop! Let's go! Considering nightfall was upon me, I decided to stay aboard my raft to prepare a few items and as well as tried to park my oversized raft properly, which proved to be a challenge on its own. Day 58, I began the challenge of uncovering the mysteries of Caravan Town. To do that, I had to find a few items, like this battery part for instance. Then moved on to the Caravan Parkour, where I had to figure out the first puzzle. Alrighty, so we got a puzzle to work out here, so let's quickly do this. Rotate the freak. I'm trying to rotate the thing. There we go. Does that look good? Gonna put this down, down, down you go, buddy. And uh, where, where else we need to go? I need to find the next one. Oh, there we go. So, no, not that way. Oh, not too bad. Hey, it's not going down. All right, let's see if it works now. The freak is over shots again. Let's do a die time. Yeah, that, there we go. That does it. Do it a couple of times. Let's see. Yeah, there we go. Zip line. Boom. We got ya. Done with that puzzle. I was off to find more of the missing pieces that were required. Alrighty, so might be the last uh, part for this day, because as you can see, it's quite dark. We got our explosive. We're gonna crash right there. It's one way, right? There we go. A zip line part and firework blueprints. Now we need to go that way. So I can see pipes. That'll be the last uh, zipline part, I assume. Oh, see ya! I need this! There we go. Oh, there we go. This is the last part I need. Lastly, I had to craft the zipline tool and make my way to the mayor's office. Let's get out of here. One more place to check out. I really need to get a, a bag for myself. There we go. Mayor's hat, the battery stuff charger and a note awesome engine controls let's just put this on for now for some space there we go all right so uh try and make it back to our raft uh leave what we can there come back and read this place for day 60, I opted to remain here in Caravan Town. Now that I have unearthed its hidden secrets, it was time for me to start looting this place. I searched every nook and cranny, trying to find any and all of the loot that I could. By the end of the day, I did manage to find quite a few good items, biofuel, hinges and more. I mean, I'm pretty happy about that, not having to waste resources to craft them. However, it was getting late and I needed to get back to my raft ASAP. With Caravan Town behind me, I I set my course for one of the green islands on the receiver. While on my way to the island, I took some time to work on the yacht build, as I wanted to start up the second floor of the yacht. I continued working on the raft for day 62 and eventually reached the island I was aiming for. Approaching land, I thought it would be a good idea to check out that metal detector that I had just unlocked. I grabbed the required resources and crafted the item. Equipped with the metal detector, I hopped onto land and followed its cues. It led me around the island for a while. As I didn't really know how it worked. But after some time, I figured things out and found my first hidden treasure. Then I proceeded to take out the warthog that was lurking in the distance. After dealing with that beast, I raced back to the raft to prepare a few net canisters for trapping any wildlife I spotted. And as night was creeping up, I decided to stay back at the raft to catch some much needed sleep. It was an early start to day 63 as I ventured out to land, finding all the trees I could find for planks, all the while keeping an eye out for more hidden treasures and any wildlife I could tame. As I was busy chopping down some trees, I came across a goat. And you know, I just had to try my luck at taming this buddy. I readied my net launcher, took aim and fired at the goat. With my first shot, I was able to trap it and basically tamed my first animal. Carrying it back to the raft, I named it Bob Wilson and left it to roam while I took care of the damage the shark had done. Not wanting Bob to wander too far, I went ahead and placed down a few rope fences and set up a grass plot to keep Bob Wilson happy and safe. For day 64, I worked on my raft some more, adding more support beams, walls and flooring to the second level and repositioned the sail. Of course, there was that darn freaking shark to take care of and resources were running low, so I spent some time fishing for trash that the ocean provided. 
Alrighty, the yacht build had to be put on hold for a little because I just didn't have the resources to go any further. I also needed to use the resources that I had to prep for the upcoming mission, for which I went ahead and set my course, adding in the coordinates. Done with that bit, I went to prep a few items to take with me. I cooked up more veggie soup, grabbed another basic bow and a few metal spears and a few other bits and bobs to help me get there. It was definitely going to be a long ride to the next one. Okie dokes, with everything prepped, it was time to embark on the next mission, Tangaroa. This place had a ton of things to be done. Firstly, I had to find parts to fix a generator. Let's get it in here and do the business. So, what I do know is we need to get a couple of parts to fix the generator. Firstly, we need to move to the cafeteria, I think. Ooh, should I take them out? These ones are a bit tougher, yo. Ooh, I thought it was another rat. Um, I don't know, this way? There you go. Grab the third one. Nice. Alright, let's get out of here. Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. Any of the baddies here? Not. Here we go. Once that was done, I had to fix the generator. See what happens. And then take on a puzzle by moving shipping containers with a giant size magnet. So basically... What we have to do is get from this end to that end. Oh, this is gonna be take some time, right? Uh, yeah. You don't need. Haha. Ha ha. Yeah, there we go. And now. With that out of the way, the next obstacle to get through was even crazier. Still up in the tower. I say leave them there to rot. What I need to do is take out these guys. In order to fix the electricity problem, I had to go up to the surface to find tape from the apartment buildings. Let's go ahead and grab the tape that we need. It's just crazy how many things we need to do here. I know there's uh, the Screebereba rats that we need to take out. Just gonna look carefully for all the tapes. Because we need all the tape we can find. Any tape for us? Oh, we got tokens. Tokens we don't really need. Yay! Yay! Come on, buddy! Stay there! Ah, <laughs> oh, there we go. Beauty. Tokens. We'll take just in case. I think just before we press on we might need to restock on some water because water's running low bro five minutes later oh you can't climb on this oh brilliant he's such a stupid robot yeah stupid robots I'm this side. <laughs> no, you need to calm down, buddy. It's a rough day, man. We get. Yes, let's just resupply. Well, we all good to go. Let's go and collect that uh, tape that we need, shall we? Hey, bro. That's what we need. Tape, y'all. Tape. Brilliant. Hey, yo. There's a tape. Yo. Where's the butt? Oh, there's tape. Tape, son. Tape. It's quite dark now, so. How many pieces of tape we have so far? We have seven. We need just two more. 
Right, so this should be the last building we need to get. Ugh. Where's the body rat? There we go. We need just one more, I think. Go up here. And grab our last piece of tape. Hey, here we go. We should have everything we need. Nine pieces of tape. Brilliant! During my time on the surface, I racked up a whole bunch of coins and decided to get one of those leather backpacks to help me out a bit with carrying space. Cheatsy bag. Oh, wait. I already got a bag, right? Did I get a bag? Yes! There we go. Backpack. And what do we have? How many tokens? We have three tokens left. Nothing's for three. Ah. Oh. Alright, let's get this done with. Then, it was off to fixing up the electricity problem in the basement. Coming, buddy. I'm coming. There we go. There we go. That's another one. And fix this. Yes! There we go. We're done. Completing that part of the mission, I needed to make my way to the tower in the middle of Tangaroa. Awesome. Let's grab this. This. Sort everything out just now. And cassette. Now, let's get to where we need to go. Where do we need to go? Oh yeah, there we go. And, uh, keep on going. Up oh, the zip line, I suppose. Where's the zip line? Let's go there. Woo wee! That's great. Okay, so. There we go. Boom, son. Right Hey, wait, yo, wait. Wait, wait, I don't want to die. Not yet. Jeez. There we go. Nothing much here. Let's cool down the elevator. Alrighty. Oh, there's a blueprint. And the blueprint gives you the code. No, I'm kidding. I already know the code. <laughs> Four. <coughs> eight. One. Three. There you go. Chill out, buddy. Yes! We're almost done. Finally, heading off to the last building to complete this chapter. Thing we need to do. That's to get here. Up, up, and away. There we go. My friends, we have completed this place because all we need is the Veruna coordinates. And uh, we're good to go, mate. We're good to go. And we have a new mate. Awesome. With 100 days closing in really fast, I was pretty anxious about getting all that I needed to get done and also trying to complete my yacht build within the time frame. So, you can see where my headspace was. That is why I decided to set sail for the next chapter, Varuna Point. During my journey to Varuna Point, I went ahead to research some of the new materials that I had just discovered, unlocking a whole bunch of high-end machinery. I also cooked up a few pieces of titanium in the smelters and I was able to craft the battery charger. For Unfortunately, I grabbed some biofuel along my adventures and was able to test out the battery charger by charging two of my dead batteries. Then on the following day, I spent time working on the watering system, hooking up the electric purifier, placing down some piping and sorting out the other bits and bobs to get the sprinkler system to work. However, I didn't really know what I was doing, so it took a while to figure things out. On day 72, the sprinkler system was finally sorted. I got it working and set it to automatically water my crop plot. While I was busy sorting out a few things, I noticed that Varuna Point wasn't too far off. With some time on hand, I opted to put up a few wooden structures on the second level with the extra planks that I had collected and started preparing a few items to take on the next mission. My gear, a few healing cells and cooked up some grub to go. Alrighty, it was time to take on the next mission. Here, I needed to scope out the submerged part of the building and find a few light bulbs to fix one of the lights. We're, we're on the other side of where we need to go, but it's a-okay. So, this is where we need to go, I believe. Let's give it a shot. Um, what we do need is some flippers. Kawabunga, dudes! Okay. So, first off... We need to go here. 
and grab everything we can from this place. But mainly we're looking for light bulbs. Anything unwanted. Oh, ooh. Anglers. Holy smokes, bro. Let's grab that for a while. Let's go close this so you don't come by me. Will you leave me alone, please? So we got how many we have? We have two. Let's go. Let's grab this and a note. Where do we need to go? Okay. We all get. And there's the bulb. Then tackle one of the most insane obstacle courses. This is where we need to go. Ooh. Oh yeah, this is the obstacle course. Hey, shush, buddy, shush. Hold up. Ah, jeez. Gotta jump over this, man. There we go. Crouchy! Wait, am we going the right way? We got traps to go over. Brilliant! We made it! Awesome! Wait. There you go, mother load key. And it was time to face off against the first boss on raft. There we go. Looking for G. G, G, G. G, G, peeps! Oh, there we go. This is it, mate. It's time to rock and roll, son. Yep. Time to rock and roll, son. Oof. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, yeah, 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 yeah. Wait, buddy. I need air. Hey, here we go. I need to pick this. Please don't hurt me. Please don't hurt me. Please don't hurt me. Yes, there we go. Whew, that was so freaking crazy, man. Let me grab some uh, air here while I still can. Yes, there we go. Easy does it, tiger. Where'd you go? You're gonna kill me before. Hey, never mind. You, you, you did it. You did it. Hey, buddy. One more time. Yeah, there we go. That's how you do it. Oh, he didn't give me a chance, man. Come on, buddy. Hey, <laughs> there we go. We got you, Rhino. Sharky. The last thing I had to do here in Varuna Points was some skyscraper parkour to get where we need to go. Hopefully I can make it and not die. Hey, there we go. There we go. We got to do this in the dark, so... It's a little bit crazy. Nah, not too bad. All the way up, up and away. We got the crane to deal with. And then, uh, I think it's here. There we go. The crane key. Lever. And that's gonna pop something right there for us. Jeez. And then, zip line to one of the nearby buildings. All the way there, I suppose? Yeah. We're good. Hey, wait. Boom. There we go. Alright, so, all the way we go. And uh, there it is. The final blueprint we need. What is this? Advanced a battery. You can have that. And temperance coordinates. We're done here, peeps! We're done! Well, there wasn't much to loot here in Varuna Point, so I set sail for No Man's Land. As I worked on the second level of my yacht build, I added some support beams, laid down flooring, erected a couple of walls, and installed a staircase for easy access. I was trying my best to shape the raft to match my envisioned design, working as fast as I could to complete the yacht before my time ran out. Oh yeah, I also went ahead and placed a few bird nests at the front of my yacht to find out what they actually do. 
do. The next couple of days, I focused on stocking up valuable resources required for my upcoming missions and to complete the yacht build. This involved taking our friend, the mighty Great White, multiple times, and then stripping the land and reef for its essential loots, from seaweed to precious ores and everything else in between. Next on my agenda was to find and tame some llamas and cluckers. The llamas would provide the fur needed to craft leather armor, and cluckers would supply eggs for crafting healing cells. I set my course for Caravan Town, as it was recommended to visit these islands for those animals, and fired up my engines for a speedy trip. I spent the free time I had traveling to do some work on the second floor of my yacht belt, adding in more flooring space and rearranging a few things. Day 80, I finally reached Caravan Town, but I encountered some trouble taking down the screecher this time around. With pure determination and a whole lot of patience, I pressed on and eventually defeated the big old fella. After spending the afternoon dancing with the screecher, I set out in search of the animals I wanted to tame. Luckily, at the very top of the staircase, I found a mech clucker. It was quite a crafty little bird, dodging my first attack. However, I quickly learned to observe its behavior to find an opportunity, and when the moment presented itself, I pounced on it, trapping the clucker and bagging my first birdie, which I named Neville. I continued the search for a llama into the night. The thing is, though, there weren't any llamas on this island. However, I did manage to find a second clucker. Yeah, I went ahead, tamed the fella, and carried him a long way back to the raft. The search for Ilama continued the next day and the following ones, taking me to different islands in the hopes of finding the elusive animal. All I managed to encounter was another goat and a little porkster, which I took out for its meat and leather. As for the other island, it had little to offer. So I took out my good old companion Percy and went for a dive into the reef, gathering all the resources I could find. With all the bad luck I had trying to find a darn llama, it was only right I would have a stroke of good luck. You see, on day 83, while exploring a huge green island. Guess what happened? Oh yeah, peeps, this was it. Not only did I find one llama, but I stumbled upon two freaking llamas. And you bet, I had to tame both of these llamas with my knit gun and carry them all the way back to my raft, dodging that darn screecher overhead as well. But at the end of the day, we made it back to the raft, safe and sound, reuniting with the rest of my crew. Now that I had quite a number of animals on my yacht, a little rearrangement was required. Required. You see, in order to keep my animals happy and productive, I needed a set amount of crop lots for them. So I repositioned the sprinkler, added some piping, and installed more crop lots to feed all of the animals I had. After that, I proceeded to build a better fence around the so-called animal pen. I didn't want any of my buddies going overboard just in case the shark decided to take a whole chunk out of the raft, ending up with this piece of beauty. I kinda like how it all just worked out. Before moving on to the next mission, I decided to go for one last resource run. I took out the shark once more, dove down to the reef and gathered as much as I could. Done with that part of the day, I headed back to the raft. There, I set the coordinates for the next area of interest and started up my engines for the long journey ahead. By day 86, I was closing in on Temperance, and I needed to prepare quite a few items to help me with the upcoming challenge. I cooked up some healing salves, of course, to replenish my HP, packed some grub to go, and made sure my water bottles were filled to the max. Then, I gathered all the gear I would need for this trip. A couple of spears, as I heard I would be facing polar bears, and a few other bits and bobs, just in case. I also crafted a juicer, intending to use it, but somehow, I just couldn't figure out how it worked. So yeah, I had to leave it aside for another day. Anyways, I had to hurry along as I was heading straight for land and needed to dock my yacht as close to it as possible to move on to the next mission. So, I was about to take on Temperance, but first, I had to actually get there by traversing an unforgiving stretch of frozen terrain. Yep, that's going to be crazy. Almost there. Can do this. Just a few steps. Yeah. The second task on the agenda was to obtain electric cables from certain towers, which were accompanied by polar bears that I had to deal with as well. Holy smokes. Okay. Hey, yo. Hey, yo. Easy tiger. Grab all the juicy cables. I think I'm just gonna try and grab all the cables I can. 
I, I forgot how many how many we need. We we'll try and grab as much as we can. Afterwards, I checked out the observatory for a key. So, hey, yo, wait, can we go to the front? Ah, oh, frick! Got to get down there. Try and get on this. There you go. Awesome, awesome. Sup, buddy? I don't see you. Can you see me? Probably. We need to get out of here, though. What we have here. All right. I need to find more of those uh, thingamabobsies. How many did we get? Oh, we got two. Oh, where? Oh, there we go. Three. The last one. It's not inside. But it's on. T Break. <laughs> wait, wait. With the air horn and the That's not it. That is it. Brilliant! Okay, so we need to find the numbers for these things. Um, let's see what we have first. We have a bird, blowfish, a hook, and a raft. So the bird is number one. Let's see if I can find this thing. Oh, wait, there's a hook. Go one, two, three, four, five, six. Let me write that down somewhere. The hook is... A th Third. Okay, it's third. Come on! Gotta find us. Wait, this is no nothing that we need. What is this? Is this the blowfish? Does it look similar? I think so. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. That, my friends, is number two. Nine. Is that the bird? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Five, nine, six, seven. Five, nine, six. Seven. <laughs> nope, not it. Gotta look again. Five, nine, six, four. Success. We have that. So the key and uh, blueprint advanced stationary anchor. Okay, it's time to get out of here. Following that, I continued collecting cables on my way to a puzzle located in a village at the center of the island to acquire the blowtorch. All right. Uh, how we do this shears net? One there. I think we just have to connect them, right? There we go. What you got for me here, buddy? I'm thinking we have to go here, right? Yeah. Oh, there we go. Advanced blueprints. Bio refiner. Biofuel refiner. And is that it? Oh, yeah. We need that. That I remember. Blowtorch. The next item on the agenda was to visit a research facility with numerous rooms filled with mind-bending puzzles, all to obtain a few control rod parts needed to unlock the main area. Okay, we need to use the blowtorch for this. Thank you. Right on, mate. All right, so this is going to be quite difficult. We got to get uh, controls for this. Control rods. And we need to go there. Which is... Oh. There you go. Radioactive. And uh, we need to get this thing done. ASAP. PM is 61. CL is 17. 17. I gotta write this down. Okay. So how do we do this, mate? Let's try and do this as fast as possible. You know what? <laughs> Just to be safe. I need to get another hazmat suit. 61. Let's go. Alright, 61. is 17. And... RB is 37. We got this, mate. We got this. Yo! Let's go! 
Oh, we gotta take care of these bugs. Okay. A hazmat suit is needed. Let's go down here, man. Do the dirty. Oh, this, this thing, this thing is not cool. Oh, son, where's the bugs? Oh, come on, man. Come on. We don't have much time here. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hoo-wee! All right. I'm gonna hate going that way. Ooh, 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 This place. I do know what this is. Something to do with laser beams. Go under. How do we... Need to go there. Wait, wait. Oh, a little more this way. There you go. A little more. Ah, gotcha, mate. I got it. All right, let's press onwards. Grab this one. It's going to be a little more hectic. So, I suppose it's supposed to go that way. It's going to take a while. Yucks! That was scurry. Oh, never mind. Let me go and get some hazmat suits, man. This is going to take a while. Okay. Go down like that. So close! Yet so far! Hey! Come on! Go! Sweet! And the notes! Brilliant! Awesome. Alright, so let's go ahead and place these. Get some water. And uh, one more there. Uh, we got a note we forgot to pick up. Um, reactor, I suppose. Guys, reactor key? Oh. Now you tell me. Once the control rods were found, I gained access to the reactor, and it was finally time to finish the job. Awesome. Let's see how we can do this, mate. Oh. You scurry bug, you! Alright, how's our armor doing? Let's go ahead and. Oh, freak my soul, you. Oh, freak. You know what? Yes! Oh, we just go that way. Brilliant. We're safe, right? We're safe. We did it. We freaking did it. Utopia cords and electric smelter. Ooh. Yo, that's a new character. Or oh, the... Yeah. All right, with Temperance behind and only a few days left before time ran out, I dedicated this time to work on my raft, hoping to make a significant progress in completing the build. Fortunately, I was able to obtain a considerable number of wooden planks, allowing me to finish the second level of the yacht. However, this left me pondering how I would tackle the construction of the third and final level. I had a few ideas for this task and tried some of them, only to realize that most of these ideas sucked and were quite expensive as well. Well, anyhow, I persevered in trying to find the right design, considering various options. Gathering planks took some time, but eventually things started coming together, and I achieved the desired look. I was thrilled that it all worked out, and I could finally see the end of my yacht build. And it looked freaking amazing. However, there was one issue. I ran out of resources. This meant I had to put the build on hold yet again, as I tried to collect as many resources as the ocean could provide. Oh yeah, guess what peeps? I was almost almost at the finish line. To top it off, I spent the next two days farming the reefs for all the resources I needed for the final showdown. And yes, old Brucey didn't escape me. He went down too. But man, my yacht was looking super cool, y'all. I just love that freaking thing. So my friends, it was the final day to work on my yacht. Luckily, I was able to acquire a whole bunch of planks over the past few days, enabling me to complete the third level of my yacht. Boy, was I relieved that I actually finished the 
yacht built. It looks better than I had imagined and so freaking cool. Anyway, it was just one of the tasks done. The second and final task was to complete the last mission. And so, on day 96, I punched in the coordinates to the land of Utopia, geared up my engines and prepped the items that I would need to take down Olaf the Destroyer. So my friends, it is time to take on Utopia. I gathered all of my gear and set out to unravel its mysteries. Here's the thing, as with most of the Raft's mission, puzzles were involved and Utopia wasn't an exception. There were tons of puzzles here and a new enemy to tangle with. Huge man-eating hyenas. Hey, there you go. No, 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 no. I want my metal arrows back. Buddy. First off, I had to dig up some codes to enter a building and obtain a harpoon. The next piece of the puzzle. This is what we need. Uh, this one? Are you sure? Wait, nope. Nope. Not that one. Certainly got it wrong. Uh, is it that one? Nope. Oh, wait. Is this one? Yes. There we go. Okay, and the other one should be across here. It's either this one. I'm just gonna take a chance. Oh, there we go. It's either this one. Ha! Broskies! Now, my friends, we need to enter this spot. Woo wee! Big backpack, a harpoon, that's what we need. And some food. Then, I needed to take out some hyenas and grab a few cables. No, we can't go there. Holy smokes. Yeah. What you want here, son? Oh, come on. Yes. We need to be collecting something. Hey? Yeah. Cables. Yeah, there we go. Oh, son. After collecting the cables, I had to lay them out to get the generators to work. Let's give it a shot here. See if we can get it to work. First time. Maybe try and get this to there. Let's see if it does. Alright, put that there. Now, from that, we need to go there, across, and then to the genie. Oh! Nice! There we go. And one more for the show. Yo! There we go! Those generators started up a water pump with pipes. Loads of pipes that needed to be untangled. Oh boy, those pipes were something. Let's see if we can do this. Alright, we got three of them to solve. We need to get water from here over to the next one and next one and then to that big one there two hours later all right all right i think i got it took some time but i think i am it great stuff now it's time for round two man <laughs> oh my freaking soul this is this is madness Six months later. Holy freaking crap. I think I got it. That's when I obtained a canister for the harpoon launcher that led me to a key. That is crazy. Now, we need to get up there, I guess. Grab that. Stop. Oh. Jeez. You gave me a fright there, son. Let's go. All the way. Yeah. Brilliant. So, we need the key. Some food. Leftovers. Yeah, that's not gonna help us. The next morning, I continued with the quest, grabbing a second key and opening a secret door that led to my worst nightmare. A mind-boggling obstacle course that made me want to bang my head against a wall or something. And all that for a freaking hammer. Man, a freaking hammer. Let's grab that. We're supposed to pull this down and do a parkour. I beg, don't push me down, son. I can't do this again. Yes. Nice and slow. Oh. Wait, do I have to pull this? I don't know. I'm just pulling it. Uh, I don't know if I should pull it. But we're going back there anyways. Oh, no. <laughs> After that, it was off to another set of puzzles that I had to get through. Hey, buddy. Get out of here, man. Um, we need to go somewhere here. Grab these boxes. There we go. And we need to pick this up. There we go. Pick that up. And uh, send it down 
There. All right. So here we need two hours later. We lost. Wait. Oh wait. This. This is right here. All right, buddy. See ya. When I see ya, I got to do this darn stupid thing again. One million zillion jillion dillion cotillion times later. It was day 100 and I was almost there, peeps. I had a few more puzzles to get through before taking on Olaf's nightmare. We'll get this. This stack here. Do we need one more? Oh, no, we don't. It's fine. You have your chance to leave, but you just won't listen. Ooh. So fine. Have it oh, we need to go to him. Yeah, yeah, whatever, man. All right, so, uh, yeah, we need to stack. Because this guy is going to bomb us. Sheesh. How am I supposed to do this? Yeah, now we can get on top there. Run! Run away! Like a gingerbread man! There we go. Woo-wee! Oh, shush. Please. Oh, wait. Okay, 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 okay. However, for the first time, I kind of panicked for a bit. And in that time, I got overwhelmed by everything that was going on and passed out. No! Anyways, I was back with a vengeance and flew past the challenge here. this time around. Come on. How are you not getting hurt by the fire, mate? Alright, alright, alright. Let's go! Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Ah. Yes, I made it. And so, my friends, it was time to take on Olaf's secret weapon, a hyena don. I'm pretty scared, man. I mean, there it is there. I'm, I'm pretty scared. Is he interested in this thing? Oh, never mind. Okay. Oh. Ooh. Ooh Please don't hurt me. Please don't hurt me. Wait, 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 wait. Oh. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Let's go. Wait. Jeez. Whoop. Uh. What you got? I'm gonna run. I'm gonna run. No, 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 no! Hold up! Use this thing. Oh, we're trapped. Yo! Yeah! No freaking way, buddy! No freaking way! We got here! Beauty! Oh, my freaking soulmate. Done with the hyena. I went after Olaf to see what he had to say for himself. Unfortunately, he trembled at the sight of the pure awesomeness of the camster. And well, he sort of backed up just a step too far and fell over the side of the building. Luckily, he was still okay, dangling from some ropes. Well, I then obtained a key from him. And with that key, I unlocked the freedom of Utopia. When the ocean itself broke civilization, the survivors were left with nothing. Yet, they persisted. The forward scouts rose up from the wreckage, defied our flooded world, and brought back hope. Now Utopia stands free once again thanks to their actions. With this final chance, we can begin this slow and difficult road to recovery. From today on, we are all forward scouts, ready to discover the next step for humanity.